Welcome to this wonderful walk down the digital marketing lane as we speak to Professor Ajay Chhabra, who has over 18 years of experience in the digital marketing industry. So you worked in several industries like health, retail, and technology. How did you end up coming to Fame University to teach as a professor? Because you've also received a lot of awards from Ogilvy and uh, GE in the marketing industry. So how was Fame the next? All right. So yeah, first of all, thank you so much for giving me this opportunity to speak to you. And uh, uh, primarily, I, I have been into technology marketing and technology sales when I started my career, basically. So uh, at the start of my career, I was uh, my first job was into after campus placement was into software selling, basically, okay. software sales and consulting. So from uh, document management solutions to CRM solutions selling uh, in UK, basically. And then uh, my first stint with digital marketing came in 2005 when I joined a healthcare company in US and which was into electronic medical records basically. Okay. And that time like uh, we were offshore marketing team and the main uh, sales team were there in US basically. Product development and like marketing was in India offshore basically. So that time we had only two, three marketing strategies like we were only focusing upon attending a trade show once in a year maximum plus writing for uh, associations like there are a lot of doctor associations in USA basically and we used to write some articles uh, in the name of our MD okay and then like we used to do SEO search engine optimization so that was the only time first time when I kind of uh, touched uh, digital marketing and content marketing in 2005 and we did some bit of optimization in terms of creating some sort of JavaScript based uh, pop-ups which were into marketing automation like they were the kind of seedlings for marketing automation okay. the way we see marketing automation now in 2010-2012 yeah. we did a bit we achieved some bit of automation that time basically so uh, and from 2005 and 2011 basically that was transformational career years for me and very nice uh, got to join uh, like a gaming company I was into 2D 3D, 3D animation gaming company and uh, from that gaming company I came in touch with Ogilvy basically. Okay. So so I was vendor to Ogilvy for almost one year basically. Okay. And I used to help their digital marketing teams like the account directors because they didn't have intern in-house team basically. So the guy who hired me in Ogilvy, like uh, he's my mentor also basically, he said that uh, Ajay I'll hire you after one year. You keep on helping me in all my projects basically till then. So, so from, consulting? yeah, I was consulting vendor to them Ogilvy for almost one year. And even before joining Ogilvy, I worked on a couple of projects basically. Okay. So that's how I got introduced to uh, Ogilvy. And even while why I got introduced to Ogilvy was that they lacked certain specific digital skill sets that time basically. And lack of in-house team basically. So I was kind of representing them in meetings and all that. And uh, we did a lot of good work basically. A uh, lot of brands I worked on, Vodafone, uh, Nokia. Samsung that time basically. So these were a couple of brands I worked on and uh, Perfetti one Male basically. Okay. So uh, so that's how I got into main line uh, advertising domain basically. Okay. And when he when my mentor got approval of setting up in-house team, he gave me a call one fine night. He said, Ajay, you can come and join us from tomorrow and you can put Ogilvy after your name basically. So that's okay. how we started working. Uh, so that's how we get, got into mainline advertising industry basically. Okay. And uh, so it was a really good stint there. Like in Ogilvy, like uh, uh, I was kind of working with all the mainline account directors, like people from all other brands who were seeking digital marketing help for the first time basically. Okay. So we used to have a lot of brainstorming sessions, new idea generation sessions basically. Mm lot of execution, lot of outsourcing basically. Okay. And that day, this that first year of mine in Ogilvy was a fantastic year from a digital point of view. We had fantastic achievements, we got a lot of uh, turnover in that in that uh, department basically. And I still remember one of our president from Mumbai came to Delhi to celebrate our like uh, uh, success. Oh, wow. After the one year and we had a wine party in office basically. Mm. <laughs> that was very nice. Yeah. So after working for Ogilvy for a couple of years basically. So after working for Ogilvy for a couple of years, I got a chance and call from McCann Erickson. So McCann Erickson was looking for somebody to head their uh, Microsoft account basically. 
So they shortlisted my profile and they hired me for Microsoft to take care of digital marketing for Microsoft basically. So I joined them, I started handling that account basically. But slowly, slowly based on my career and uh, inclination towards building marketing strategies for the brands, so they put me in kind of a strategic uh, marketing role basically, wherein uh, I used to get aligned with all the mainline brands and we used to go and pitch together, we used to take the brief and my role was to build a pitch document for the brand, work on the complete pitch and then go and present to the client basically. So slowly and slowly, steadily I, I entered into the space of uh, digital marketing strategy basically. So we started building strategy pitches and we started uh, handling clients and my uh, country had that time, Mandeep, he, he is still the, he is the now overall uh, kind of president for the integrated division there. So he never used uh, to let me handle any client. He said, your time is very precious, you don't need to service any client, you just focus on strategy, build the presentation, go and pitch, get the agreement out and then focus on another brand basically. That's how I started working in McCann. And McCann also I got another chance to work for GM basically. So that time like GM was launching certain global initiatives and uh, in industry like we, uh, this industry is very small basically. Everybody knows everybody basically. And uh, the lady client there was really tough basically. Mm -hmm. So Mandeep told me that we have a tough client to handle. Can you start servicing a client also? I said I am fine basically. Yeah. And it was GM basically, General okay. Motors basically. And yeah. they were working on a global project basically. They were not in India for too long. Mostly. Yeah, GM? so they, they came to India, they went out, yeah. they came. They, it had happened twice, thrice basically. Okay. So they were in India, then they rolled back operations, then they came back. So oh. it, it had happened a couple of times basically. Okay. So that time like they were consolidating all their digital presence on one platform. So hmm. across the world 500 websites were being transitioned to one platform basically. That was the kind of project I got involved into. And uh, we launched Chevrolet.co.in. That was my first project for GM. And it went so successful that like, and in fact one of the project uh, that time was Beat Diesel basically. Hmm. Yes, I remember so, that. Uh, in Beat Diesel like I did the complete strategy. We had huge budgets basically to spend and we started pretty early and based on the kind of digital innovations we did for that launch even I was fortunate to meet with uh, Mr. Prasoon Joshi also okay. for this particular pitch basically Lovely. so Mr. Prasoon Joshi came to Delhi office and we had a joint brainstorming session with him we collected all those ideas basically and he was pretty impressed with the way a digital team was working in Delhi office basically okay. and uh, our launch was very successful like uh, I got a call from my that same tough client Mm. I, if you want, I can take her name. She was Preeti Bhatnagar. Okay. And uh, she called me after one week of launch. She said that, Ajay, uh, whatever you want me to write for you or your organization, MRM, I am happy to write because we had a target to sell 5,000 cars in one month and we have been able to achieve that in just six days basically. Oh, that's great. The day of launch, we had 10,000 people signed up already through digital for uh, like uh, uh, test test drives basically. Oh, okay. So the day of launch we had 10,000 people lined up already basically and we, oh. we, we were facing shortage of cars that yeah. time basically. So it was a success, success, successful launch and the result was that uh, uh, McCann Erickson got uh, uh, some more, uh, they in, like increased our scope and uh, scope of work basically. Yeah. We got uh, other countries also basically. And the global Chevrolet brand team came to India just to train us basically. Oh wow! It was a three day workshop okay. and they organized a workshop for us. I was part of that workshop. And the global Chevrolet team, they conducted training sessions for us basically. Okay. I was fortunate to be part of that. And uh, so that, that was my journey and after that kind of uh, like uh, since I was doing very well and not only GM but I worked on a lot of accounts basically. Uh, one another account which I remember now is that Reebok basically hmm. when India won World Cup. Oh. Uh, in 2011 okay. and uh, on that World Cup win we had a campaign launch basically mm. so that was a face Facebook campaign which I proposed to the MD of Reebok India they loved it and they launched that campaign and again it was a great successful campaign like uh, I was made admin for a, a Reebok uh, uh, India page and like uh, that time before the start of the campaign one week before it was 2.5 lakh likes and within one week, that after the campaign was over, it was close to 7.5 like, oh, wow. uh, lakh likes on the face, uh, Facebook page of Reebok India. Yeah. So it was a huge success. Like uh, we had a physical meeting of 100 top fans from Facebook to meet Harbhajan Singh Dhoni and Yuvraj in Mumbai. So I was I I I, uh, I came to Mumbai and it was in Lalit basically. I think Lalit or Sahar International. I don't remember that now. 
so we had a great session there we met all those stars even the fans met their cricket stars in mm. real uh, real world basically yeah. and it, this was really great moment for all the fans from facebook basically and it was 2011 so in 2011 we did that facebook based fan uh, engagement campaign okay so which was pretty successful reebok uh, sales soared that time and they were able to achieve lot of numbers in that particular year basically because the brand strength was really high and we were able to capitalize on the uh like brand ambassadors who were working for us that time okay. and since we won world cup in 2011 right. so that was kind of these were some of the two defining brands i would say in my life like uh, brands like gm brands like reebok like they gave me lot of exposure i also worked on nestle basically mm. i did the strategy for start healthy stay healthy program basically that time very very uh, basic row strategy that time basically Uh, like on the lines of Johnson and Johnson's baby center. Okay. Like it was it is a portal for uh, like uh, mothers basically, okay. the mothers and uh, kids. So similarly, we did a strategy uh, called Start Healthy, Stay Healthy basically okay. for Nestle India. So, so how did you end up at Flame then? Yeah. Okay. So since uh, after that, I went to GE and had a, a, another fantastic career basically, and it was a global role. I was in global Marcom team. It was a Wisconsin US based role. and uh, like uh, the kind of freedom the kind of innovation we were doing there they were like kind uh, really great basically so in ge i got to work on not only ge healthcare which was my primary business but i was working upon uh, after 6 month of stint when i finished all my projects in bangalore hmm. i came to gurgaon delhi and i started helping the cmo for ge india also okay and uh, his name was manish jain manish is now the president of bajaj finance oh uh, wow. yeah So Manish, I helped Manish in all their projects uh, like uh, G in India website, and then he put me into so many other businesses like G Energy, G Aviation. So within two and a half years of my career with at G, I got into a lot of businesses basically, and like that was the world's best moment. I would say it's world's best company also, and uh, like from there, like uh, in G itself, I still remember that day. when i got my call from mdi gurgaon so mdi is uh, like uh, top 10 business institution in india hmm. and they wanted me to come and talk about brand strategy so it was a guest session and g we were not allowed to go and talk basically so i had to take permission since i was a global resource operating from india so i wrote a mail to my boss so his name was robert rinderly i said uh, can i go and present uh, at uh, the campus of a mdi institution he said uh, we don't talk about our strategy and our policies outside the company hmm. i said it's purely on brand strategy nothing to do with ge basically so i forced a fully kind of so uh, seek uh, i was seeking permission from him and i got the permission to go and speak hmm. so that was my first uh, defining moment that i went i taught at mdi gurgaon so wow. they gave me a chance to speak and it was a wonderful session of uh, uh, like pg students there and uh, students somehow like students love me a lot basically and that has been my like uh, uh, personality or style so they are they, repeat, they repeated that session another time they, they and i started getting repeat calls from them basically so not only brand strategy retail strategy digital strategy even hr in digital marketing basically so all those sessions which i did for uh, like uh, mdi gurgaon basically so those were the starting of kind of my speaking opportunities and slowly and steadily like lot of institution brands I don't know where they used to get to know about my name or uh, my profile basically but I started getting lot of uh, speaking opportunities I went and spoke at HCL Technologies like okay. in their internal leadership program like they were conducting internal leadership program they invited me as a guest basically in that in their internal leadership program yeah. uh, like uh, Goodyear invited me to talk about how we can empower sales team with the help of digital marketing tools basically so through those you wanted to enter the yeah so no, basically it was kind of transitioning happening like i was practicing also i was preaching also basically but slowly slowly what happened like i started building my own content okay now uh, there was a institution i remember uh, simply learn basically so simply learn did a blanket agreement with me okay. so whenever they wanted to conduct any digital marketing session in delhi and crs so they invited me basically hmm. and they were paying pretty well basically they were paying well per hour basically right. so i conducted 8 hours session i remember and and for all the top brand directors at pepsi co basically it was a 8 hour session and i conduct like conducted that session very well and there were around 50 brand managers senior managers brand directors and they were all have to put their phone down for the entire day basically 
and it was a great moment for me also like i was like i was from kurukshetra university but i was able to teach people who are mostly from iims ibs and the top management institutions Correct, in yeah, india basically yeah. so that was a day and where i realized my own full potential and then uh, somewhere like uh, i also wanted to share my uh, knowledge with everyone basically and that's where i ventured into kind of uh, preaching basically so uh, and it did not stop there i got invited from iit delhi okay i got invited from met university basically so lot of sessions lot of classes and i never used to say no to any session basically that was my personality style whenever i used to get a call if even if there is a important business assignment in my hand i will push that off and i'll go for teaching basically so that okay. is how i transitioned from uh, like uh, my uh, practicing role to uh, uh, teaching role. role yeah Okay, that's really nice. But um, so, why did you choose digital marketing over normal marketing? Like, what is what is the difference? Clear difference between them? Okay, so basically, when uh, it fortunately I started my career in technology products basically, and uh, that time uh, like technology products products were like uh, we had to be innovative in selling them basically because. traditional media print media tv media and radio they were very costly that time basically and they were in the demand they were in the trend basically i'm talking about let's say 99 1999 to uh, 97 99 basically so we had to find innovative ways to sell in b2b space basically i was in b2b we were selling we were, we were a technology company we were selling to businesses basically so that time we we had only email marketing or directories basically we have to find directories find contacts so it was really difficult the time that time unlike now we have linkedin i can go and search for hmm. anyone and i will get the guy or yeah. the name of the person or i can simply like uh, connect with them uh, get their contact details and speak to them basically so that time like uh, technology marketing was l- little different basically like uh, most of it was around events basically trade events basically and email marketing primarily those were the only two things which we were doing basically now uh, since i was very uh, you could say that i was a keen learner basically i was like all the time like whenever you give me a software basically so i used to drill down too much into detail of that like uh, i i used to read books i used to uh, like master software basically okay. so whenever i used to encounter any new software i used to go through all the options and understand what is this option for normally if you take your own example if you use microsoft word you would only use 5 to 10% of feature basically hmm. we don't use too many features but i used to master all the software which used to come in front of me so somehow like uh, even at that time in 2002 i got a chance to meet one of my existing mentors uh his name is arvin gupta and he hired me in his company and we were into data warehousing space basically so we used to uh, completely do email marketing organize small events bring ctos and cios on a round table basically show them demo basically that is how the marketing was uh, limited that was technology marketing but even in that time like if you talk about all other major brands brands in fmcg retail automobile they were all using tv primarily basically so the tv was the first uh, medium of the choice uh, okay and let's say if a brand has 50 crore of annual budget okay so what they will do they will spend 5 crore in the production and remaining uh, 40 crores in the media and one one good tvc campaign in one year and they are done basically yeah so one tvc and out of which let's say uh, remaining 5 10 crores they would hire a celebrity basically hmm. so it was a time when celebrity endorsements and tvcs used to be the primary mode of communication in the mainline advertising and since i did not do any uh, like degree or program in marketing communication but it was only my skills based on that so since i was from technology marketing sales background and uh, selling through technology was easy for me basically okay. and that's where because of my uh, like uh, uh, like uh, capa- uh, like um, intuition and like affiliation towards software basically so i went into digital marketing basically okay and uh, uh, so and and again in that time also like the uh, time was tra- time was transitioning basically so uh, i still remember those days like uh, in 2007 when we were in ogilvy basically so some of the technology high technology companies 
even they were spending huge budgets on digital basically hmm. with and but this was not the case with fmcg brands basically they were still focusing and concentrating on mainline media basically okay. uh, outdoor used to be a lot a uh, lot of great uh, uh, that time basically so people used to do grand outdoor campaigns i still remember those days we had samsung are one of our client and if the major budget is uh, x amount of money so they would pick up the best of the locations all hmm. across delhi and cr and all across india you, and wherever you go you will see their holding or billboards yeah. basically so that outdoor advertising was uh, like very very popular and the division which i joined that time was uh, direct marketing okay and you know like the mailer you you receive now like the uh, emailer we used to send direct mailers that time basically okay <laughs> and direct mailers were of two two kinds uh, you it might be like new thing for uh, new generation basically so mailer means let's say like unicef sends you a letter basically right for donation seeking donation hmm. that's a 2d mailer it's a printed mailer on a piece of paper basically Correct. right now if uh, and we used to create 3d mailers basically 3d mailer means that a box in three three dimensions a message in that and some props which will define that uh, message hmm. and i'll give you one example basically google did one campaign that time i think way back in 2018 or so they sent a small box with a logo on it basically and it was the ad for google ads that and the message was that if you want to unlock the potential of this a potential of mark, uh, marketing call us basically and then they gave you a the logo box basically they sent to all the cmos basically okay <laughs> so you can see that example and then did they give a key uh, if they you did call not them? give the key okay no when you call yeah, them when you call them then they will uh, tell you that okay open 000 whatever okay. it was a automated dog a box say that ki if you really want to unlock the potential of your marketing call hmm. us basically okay that's really so that's yeah. a kind of a direct mailer they had sent so that time even we used to do customized newspaper uh, direct marketing like what what we used to do let's say if i have to please a customer basically i'll get economic times i'll get a uh, like i'll get my client featured and profiled on that hmm. and send a custom make a custom newspaper and drop it in his house basically oh in the morning basically <laughs> so you are a ceo if you see that wow no <laughs> you are on yeah. the page of economic times basically yeah. and that is how like it was customized let's say if my target audience are ceos so i will customize that newspaper for all those 200 ceos hmm. and they will all receive customized newspaper basically that's very nice it's that's very example yeah. of direct so these are the kind of innovations i have seen in my my own life that personalized marketing what you see now uh, it's just beyond not beyond like what is like how the way we see personalized marketing is that that can i customize the subject line of my emailer or mm-hmm. can i insert the name of my client that is how personalization has started but right. we had already seen it in direct marketing basically so Correct. direct marketing personalization used to happen surprise used to happen and it was a different time altogether the uh, only constraint factor that time was that direct marketing used to be very very costly basically yeah. so if you have to produce boxes basically right yeah. and uh, i still remember one uh, global brand uh, which came to india and they were into vibration therapy based uh, workout gym workout basically okay so we had to take some box and concept was that we'll send chocolate chocolates in a box and as a direct mailer to high hni basically yeah. so uh, so and the cost of chocolate box then some of them melted basically okay so there are a lot of over there were a lot of overheads involved in that basically so because of the uh, like uh, since but yeah it used to get response like right. whatever response we were expecting from the customer we used you to get, get response that. we used to we were getting response because there, there was a surprise factor basically. right so uh, so because of like uh, and, and all these factors like uh, since uh, digital was not mature that time when i entered into digital marketing like like i said that i did my first seo project way back in 2005 i had nobody to guide me basically so when did digital marketing enter india so digital marketing uh, okay so in the year 2007 basically 2007 and 2009 it was a time when uh, digital marketing was almost 5% of the total budget spent basically okay around 5% basically now uh, i still remember those days of my pitching in ogilvy we wherein uh, like uh, the pitch leader would, would tell us that okay you make 200 slides presentation hmm. but you will get 5 minutes towards the last of the pitch basically so we used to make pitch for 200 slides and then have but 5 then, minutes then we'll, uh, you will get only 5 minutes to speak because first tv guy will come hmm. he will narrate his story because hmm. there is a lot of stakes involved lot of media money involved basically 
then radio guy will come he will uh, talk about radio story then uh, print guys will come they will bring lot many bring large size color print outs to show to the client to pitch the uh, client i have attended lot such pitch uh, meetings basically so and even uh, even we used to go and pitch even at 2 o'clock in the night like okay. in those days basically and yeah. we were we were one of the we uh, ogilvy that time was uh, india's leading agency okay. and it is uh, now also basically they still there yeah 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 definitely <coughs> so uh, so that time like uh, uh, it was just 5% for a traditional brand basically mm. because they were kind of piloting and experimenting that time they were not sure that uh, should i get into this or should i not get into this digital was never the choice and any which was the traditional marketer never wanted to lose their authority to a new guy basically mm. that was Correct. a big challenge yeah because all those traditional guys uh, like i still remember but there were some positive people i remember one guy who was handling hindustan times group and we launched wrap version of uh, live mint that time and i was leading that project i did the strategy we did banners we did, we did through media of a couple of lakhs basically and it was such a successful campaign so bringing people from traditional paper to a new media was considered as cannibalization of their own sales basically okay. so they were saying that if i get more people on wrap device or mobile device what will happen to my newspaper sales hmm. right. that was a challenge which they were facing but they were not afraid to uh, experiment basically hmm. the brands who were not ex- afraid to experiment they succeeded also basically so a lot of brands started doing uh, like that time they started doing short codes sms basically like bislery was very prominent in 58888 something there was a short code you send a message you get some award or reward talk time discount voucher and all that so there were a lot of short like sms sms marketing uh, came into picture basically so uh, we were uh, creating micro sites basically so micro sites were the first point of uh, interaction i did a very great viral on uh, vodafone basically it was a uh, hutch marathon basically the vodafone was called hutch before basically hmm. okay so it was oh. hutch half marathon basically okay so then they re- changed their name later on in the india basically so it was hutch uh, like uh, half marathon wherein there was a flame we had created uh, and flame was made up of those small small animated creatures basically hmm. and it was grape flame basically so you send that viral to three of your friends your name will uh, you will become a small creature and some when someone mouse over they can see your name in that uh, micro site basically oh, wow. <laughs> so it was such a great uh, viral uh, micro site and slowly that flame will turn pink basically because pink was the color of the brand basically that yeah. time okay. so so from gray flame to pink flame basically that was the concept which we did and it was like very very well accepted by the brand and i was then attending word of on brand meetings basically after after that particular project basically so <coughs> so it was uh, very less for 5% per se for the traditional brand like fmcg and retail and uh, uh, garment and all that apparels but uh, lifestyles but for technology companies they were increasing their stakes in digital media basically like we had client like cisco basically cisco was spending lot of money and they were doing innovative projects basically so the that time like uh, and uh, those were the brands who were directly getting benefited from the digital uh, uh, like um, as a first mover advantage basically right so some brands were getting first mover advantage and uh, uh, slowly the trend started uh, developing and in the year 2010 and 2012 just to answer your question basically that was a year when it started uh, showing up uh, in the tune of 15 to 20% of the advertising budgets basically okay. and that's where it started growing basically okay. and from that until now like it is now the largest media like if in in india in if in the advertising space if we are currently spending 1.25 lakh crore uh, overall advertising budgets so let's say uh, 75000 crore would be in digital right now basically 75% yeah not 75% yeah it's more than 60 65% basically okay it's already reached that stage that we are close to uh, 60 65% of the overall spends in india basically so in the last 10 years mm-hmm. can you think of any one marketing trend or campaign right, that yeah. really made you laugh and it really stuck to you like throughout these 10 years that it's been <laughs> there in the yeah yeah so there are there are lot lots of uh, lot of such campaigns which i remember basically one such campaign was done by web chatney web okay. chatney was a viral video company basically okay. and they were creating small small vi- viral videos and hmm. videos were not in trend that time okay like reels but like, shorter uh, 
wheels, but like they were like landscape videos, not the vertical ones. Okay. Vertical is, is a recent phenomenon. So they created a uh, Airtel launch signature tone basically. Okay. And uh, they created a viral video on the concept and the story of uh, Ali Baba and Charlie store basically. Okay. So Ali Baba and Charlie store reach their cave and they say the same thing that cool da sim sim. Hmm. But somehow that cave did not open basically. And caveman says that wrong password basically. Then uh, somebody try something else, somebody try something else. Finally, someone's phone rang and there was the Airtel signature tone. Hmm. And the caveman says, cave is open, you can come in basically. Okay. So it was such a funny viral right. video, which was like, I still uh, I still remember that it was really fun. And there was another campaign which uh, I still remember. It was like Mentos, Dimaag Ki Batti Jala. Ha, yeah. So that was another very, very funny campaign. There were a lot of video based. It was yeah. a completely video based microsite on how to give excuse like if you are a student how to give excuse to your professor <laughs> if you are a like uh, uh, wife if you are late if, if you are you're waiting for your date and you are late then what excuse to give hmm. basically this is the website. So, uh, it was a uh, on a bpo center what excuse to give to customer basically okay if you are late to office what uh, excuse you will give to your uh, uh, manager basically hmm. so all those excuses were created like videos and it was a micro site basically. Okay, what so, was this called? Uh, it was for Mentos basically. Mentos, okay. Because when you eat Mentos, the uh, Maki Bhatti them, Jala. Yeah, the Maki Bhatti Jala. Right. So that was a, uh, one of the uh, campaign which is still stuck on. And so do I, I don't the... see that kind of creativity till now basically. Hmm. I still remember that campaign was like very fun, fun, right. fun based campaign. So do you remember the Vodafone campaign where they used to have those Jujus, alien? Yes. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, live, sh- I was in uh, Ogilvy that time only basically. Okay. So the mainline team had invented this character basically, Adha Avatar basically and every advertising they were, that was based on Juju's and Juju's were not limited only to the TV basically. Okay. What you saw. Yeah, they were there so in So they airports. were there in the full page ads basically, yeah. they were there in co-branding mailers basically. Okay. So like they used to do a lot of co-branding mailers, let's say with MX basic people, hmm. with other brands basically. So if you're if they're sending a bill, there will be Juju's branding on that basically. Okay. So those so lot of activities. One of my uh, junior, she was like uh, account uh, exec gam basically group account manager of on Vodafone only. So okay. we used to do a lot of work together basically. Okay. So I worked on that account and in the Juju's era only basically. Okay. Yeah. Those it were really very fun. fun. Yeah, really fun basically. Yeah. So so India is a diverse market with both global like competition and Indian players also. So what do you think is working out better in India when it comes to digital marketing? Is glo- are global partners better or uh, the better option or are the Indian players the better option when it comes to digital marketing and advertising for your company or a business or somewhere you're working? Right, see, the, the way industry works basically, the way industry works is totally different basically. See, in India, like, uh, you can classify all those agencies into three tiers basically okay. or maybe four tiers basically. The first tier is a global agency basically and within global agencies there are two kind of agencies basically. One is a full service agency basically Hmm. which will be into all other areas plus digital basically. Now uh, another type of global digital agency would be that only pure play digital agency basically. Now those pure play digital agencies will have certain niches to have Hmm. like let's say I am an e-commerce, I am an agency working for e-commerce type of clients basically. I am an agency working for uh, healthcare clients basically, right? So I am an agency working for hospitality clients basically. So there is like one full service agency with all the departments, let's say PR, print, TV, radio and, and then digital. Then one pure play agency is basically. Hmm. So word over the specialization started with the help of pure play digital agencies only. Okay. They were all independent basically. Okay. And they started growing in revenues and numbers basically. Because all the traditional agencies, even including the mainline ones basically, they could not cope up with the growth of the technology skill. They could not hire technology skills hmm. basically. Since they were not able to hire, they were still with, with that same account servicing and uh, account strategy and creative mindset basically. Right. And they, since they like, uh, they were losing that battle and that's how these pure play digital agencies uh, came into picture basically. Hmm. The moment they started growing the revenues, then the acquisition started basically. So all those global agencies started acquiring those small, small, small time agencies who have already grown in 1 million, 10 million or 100 million revenues basically. So those then second phase, first phase was wherein pure play agencies came into picture, unconnected with uh, traditional agencies, but started offering 
and working with their clients only basically hmm. so let's say there is a pure play digital agency who will tie up with their traditional uh, marketing agency give them like i was helping ogilvy basically right with, from my my own uh, the agency from ludhiana basically correct so uh, same way like second phase come came when uh, there was lot of acquisitions happening basically all those small agencies who have grown in revenue they got acquired by hmm. all the global agencies only okay so that was the second phase which is even now going on basically and we're in like some of the uh, any agency if you are a small agency let's say you are at a one particular city only now uh, the moment you grow pan india let's say you have four offices minimum and let's say you're servicing delhi mumbai uh, delhi mumbai calcutta and bangalore basically and you have a pan india presence from there you start getting pan india clients basically so it's like it's a three tier model basically one local agency before that there is a freelancer now in this space there are n number of freelancers also doing digital marketing basically hmm. and it's a convenience of the brand that whether they want to do the same campaign for 50000 bucks or they want to do to pay to ogilvy for 10 lakh retainer basically deliverable will be, will be the same basically a guy who can spend x amount of money and let's say ogilvy will charge 20x deliverable will be the same again there is a brand reputation profile right. of the skill set basically hmm. so those are all different basically so from a freelancer offering digital marketing services to a local agency to a national agency having three to four offices and a global agency which is part of a global network now the advantage comes when you are part of a global network the advantages are many fold basically first you get access to the central library basically because each country would have their own campaigns each countries would have their own like uh, uh, case studies basically so if you are working on a brand here there are chances that the same brand will be there in some other country and somebody would have already done a campaign there yeah. so you can easily pull out references right. then selling or pitching a new campaign becomes easier for you in case of a global integrated agency yeah. rather than a small freelancer basically because freelancer wouldn't have that much access to information basically right so that's a difference basically in all of this okay so So we're sitting between sports complex, there's football field right there, and the cricket field is also here. Yeah. So, do you can you think of any one uh, marketing campaign, digital marketing campaign that happened in the previous ten years, maybe for the World Cup, for either cricket or football, that really like made a change in India and the way it used to go about things in lifestyle, social wise, or even in sports? It was a big achievement for us as a country. right so one of my campaign which i remember as i already discussed about that so there was a moment in 2011 match wherein lakshman and yuvraj were crying basically they okay. were crying basically uh, when the, when we won world cup when they were playing and we were, when we were in the final moment basically so uh, that time the campaign what we conceptualized was world cup deal say basically and when i was part of the briefing process and uh, like mainland team was sitting i was sitting i was sitting silent and normally i speak but i speak the most when i start speaking if i'm not speaking i'm silent basically so uh, that time whatever ideas mainline team gave to the uh, md of uh, md and brand marketing director of vivo they didn't like any of them basically hmm. and they said you have any other idea let us know other we will close this meeting basically because the uh, the md of uh, rebox said that i have been paying couple of crores to these uh, brand ambassadors basically and they are our brand ambassador how do we capitalize on that so that time i gave that idea that uh, uh, i raised my hand and said that the sir shilpa shetty cried when we won world cup hmm. he said ki what is to, it is to be do with my campaign basically i said please understand like we indians are very emotional about cricket basically yeah. and our emotions are attached to the match basically and whenever there is a match maybe india pakistan in final then the entire world comes to a stand still basically correct yeah right you can go outside all nobody the nobody is doing anything basically. correct yeah. so that's a moment in india india cricket is like religion for india hmm. it's a common religion for everyone basically so uh, that time like we like that world cup deal say i gave the we gave that concept world cup deal say and we asked indian uh, citizens that what did you feel when we won world cup basically hmm. so score your share your feelings on world cup basically okay so that was a campaign idea which was received very well and uh, it was a huge campaign we did uh, spend media also we had a media support it was a viral campaign also like whenever anybody was participating the other people were getting uh, like uh, on their home page of facebook they were getting that he, this guy has participated you can also participate oh, okay. so like whenever if you participate in that world cup dil se campaign 
the same message will be posted on your home page and all your friends can see that that Dia has participated in this campaign World Cup Bill Fair. Mm -hmm. So other friends also used to click and go to the same yeah. website. And, that and then you would see the everything. Yeah. Yeah, viral effect and uh, uh, it was like and and we selected 100 fans out of the whole campaign basically. Hmm. And I still remember that day that when I was kind of leaving uh, MRM and uh, uh, I got a, uh, I think I when I left MRM, I got a call from my ex colleague saying that uh, Mr. Pasun Joshi has shortlisted this campaign to be sent to Global FE's award basically. Hmm. So can you make the case study for that? I said yes. I, why why should I not make a case study out of that yeah. campaign? So I made that case study, we sent it over, I don't know the state afterwards. <laughs> so, so India is a very diverse country also, there is age gap, there is income gap, there is uh, standard of living gaps also in the population. So how do you think a lot of these marketing campaigns and trends, they targeted, they targeted mostly at middle class, but when it comes to the, that's the economic perspective of looking at it, when you talk about the social perspectives, right, yeah. what do you think it captures and what do you think they try to use to the advantage of consumers? Right. So, there are few social cultural values which are always depicted in Indian advertising basically. Mm -hmm. If you talk about Indian advertising per se basically. So, things like, uh, like uh, Saas Bahu conversation, mm -hmm. that's something that is always there. Mother and son relationship basically. It's like, you see all those Bon Vita ads, you will see a mother and son basically. Mm -hmm. Or mother and a daughter talking about how, can, how will you grow, when will you grow yeah. basically. Right? Then there is a, a cohesion, cohesive family basically. So these are the values which we generally display in all our advertising and festivals, celebrations of festival together basically. Mm. So you s and and there are a lot of festivals which are like uh, at the core of all the Indian ad advertising. Right. Whenever Diwali. there will be Diwali, there will be every brand will be creating Diwali uh, TVs. Mm. So there are a lot of social values, yeah. But it depends upon the brand basically. If you talk about the uh, segment basically, the segments are generally middle class, which is the uh, main chunk of the market. Target basically. audience. Yes, yes. So uh, you might not see too many luxury ads also basically. You might not see any ads which is talking directly to the uh, like uh, social uh, people in the social uh, lower strata of the social people also basically. Mm. You might not see those ads basically. But it is generally that growing middle class who is having a high disposable income right. and there are like brands trying to grab the maximum market share from, from them basically. Hmm. So those are the uh, ads which we see most of the time basically. Okay. So uh, social values like mother-son relationship, celebrations together, uh, your like uh, festivals. Fe fe festi festivals basically and young couple basically right. So mm -hmm. and and like uh, teacher and student uh, conversations basically. These are some standard specific themes. And whenever we used to do ideate, we used to think in these boxes. And these boxes are never going anywhere basically. Mm -hmm. These boxes are still there. Like if there is a brief, uh, they will try to think it from a teacher and class student perspective basically. Right. If there is a brief, they will try to think it from a. Fa senior father like senior citizen father and a young son perspective basically hmm. because they would want to see that generation divide basically that generation gap divide is always being reflected basically then at times brands experiment with religious sentiments also basically hmm. there was a recent example of Tanishq ad basically wherein a Muslim family was showing a Hindu bride basically and baby shower and it was so much controversial ad that they had to pull out basically okay. and the brand manager got fired I, I heard that basically, oh. basically. So uh, there are some some areas like uh, communi co communal community, religion, and and these are the sensitive topics basically. Hmm. Some brands want to experiment that, but normally they play safe basically because when you get into this con controversial zone, so the backlash is very high basically. And at times like some brands try to play with the like uh, direct competition ads, and then there there comes that ASCII ASCII comes into picture. They have to intervene. There are cases like recently Patanjali had faced uh, a lot of backlash from the um, Indian Medical Council basically and they have been, Supreme Court has said that, that we will fine you one crore per violation basically. Mm. So these are the things like, uh, uh, so things like, uh, things, uh, your health issues basically, your money factors basically. Relationship. So, yeah, relationship, compliances basically. Correct. So th these are some of the things which Indian advertising normally focuses upon basically. So do you think marketing tactics adopt a genuine approach? Yes, yes, it does basically. It never used to be the approach in the re, uh, 
past basically but now like this is something that uh, authenticity basically if you were to rephrase your question it is authenticity basically. brand authenticity so brand has to be authentic basically because what is happening is that like uh, customer has plenty of choices basically now uh, it's not that uh, production era or marketing era, sales era or marketing era now it is consumer era hmm. like we have evolved from four eras basically number one era was manufacturing era whatever you can manufacture you can sell basically second era was sales era basically when like you have to use direct sales person sales methods to sell anything you can manufacture basically yeah. then came the era wherein like it was marketing era like innovative use of marketing hmm. you can sell any brand or grow your brand basically now it is after the invention of digital internet smartphones basically hmm. so customer is at the center it's a customer era basically right. customer is the king basically so they have lot of choices basically so if you don't give freedom to them or you don't become authentic to them basically so uh, so now what brands have to do basically that rather than saying what we do basically so they have to focus more on why statement basically why we are doing this basically yeah. and that is a statement coming directly from uh, the apple believed in that philosophy that why we are doing this basically now and they still believe in this philosophy philosophy like if recently i saw a uh, commercial from them wherein they had the entire board members of apple talking about sustainability of the planet basically hmm. and they are still conscious about that basically so each department had talking about that what initiatives they have taken with respect to saving our planet basically because they are one of the fastest growing brand and right. like obviously when they manufacture they damage the planet earth also basically hmm. and sustainability is very important sustainability is important authenticity and see if you are not authentic with the customers like patagonia is the example basically uh, brand goal patagonia wherein uh, like uh, us, uh, like uh, if you don't become authentic with your customer if you don't care for the community they belong to hmm. so there are chances that they the loyalty will not develop and advocacy will not be there right. and they will switch over basically yeah. nike has done some cause based marketing examples like athletes uh, yeah there is love for athletes, athletes yes, also yes. they have because their product is being sold to athletes only correct That's yeah the main target audience also for them basically so if you could predict the headline for a marketing campaign or a trend right. 10 years from now <laughs> what do you think that would be <laughs> it's very simple basically oh, that would be that uh, uh, like right now we are getting into the era of conversational ai okay right yeah. that uh, personalized communication hmm. personalized ads basically personalized search result like tomorrow google will not be google basically hmm. you will see that whatever you type google will create article on the fly google will create videos on the fly hmm. google will create ads on the fly and show it to you basically right. if that thing does not exist basically they can manipulate so, you yeah, also yeah so like because that. these search engines will transform to generative ai based search engines basically so what information do you have great what information you don't have they will create on the fly while you are making that query it's going to be that fast that's the future trend but if i have to create a headline tomorrow and everything will be robotic that time like hmm. the ai will be like human hmm. answering even your emotions basically so if you are feeling sad uh, a ai conversational chat will ask you that hey dear why are you so sad today hmm. tell me the reason basically they can they will assess that so in that time like 10 years from now the headline would be that we have humans in our support team <laughs> Because so you think AI will be that like overdeveloped into yes, the whole yes, thing, yeah. There are high chances it can take jobs. Yeah. The headline would be that we have humans in our yeah, support, support team. <laughs> so that will be the headline. Basically. That's a good one, sir. <laughs> yeah. But you mentioned about smartphones and age groups, right? Yeah. Um, so there's an increasing accessibility of smartphones, tablet, laptop, even TVs. Now there's smart TVs. You can yes, yes, search yeah. things, can watch things, everything. Yes, absolutely. so it's increasing the amount of technological advancement and there are children who can also have access to all of these things and yes, what do you think should be the measures taken for marketing campaigns or even in the realm of marketing and advertising branding mm-hmm. to do to protect um, children like mm-hmm. have a distinguish between what children can access and what they can't access now to control that right yeah so i still remember i was reading one interview from steve jobs where in cnn one cnn reporter asked that question to him that you are steve jobs right and your son will be very much expert in ipad hmm. he said no i will not give my son ipad before the age of 14 basically hmm. so that was the answer basically so basically human brain child's brain child's eye are not ready to receive that volume of radiation from smartphones right. basically so we have to not only protect them accessing those devices 
बिफोर दैट जो फोर टीम प्लस वी कॉन्ट कंट्रोल बिकॉज नाउ इट इज द जनरल ट्रेंड इन इंडियन हाउस होल्ड मिडिल क्लास हाउस होल्ड इज दैट हजबेंड गोज टू ऑफिस वाइफ इज बिजी डूइंग वर्क एट होम एंड चाइल्ड इज क्राइंग वट शी विल डू शी विल स्टार्ट यूट्यूब एंड गिव द फोन टू अ टू ईयर ओल्ड चाइल्ड एंड द चाइल्ड इज वेरी हैप्पी लुकिंग एट गेटिंग आर गेटिंग स्टिम्युलेटेड एंड नाउ इफ दे हैव टू ईट समथिंग You have to keep the YouTube on, otherwise it's a big challenge that you can't feed your child. Even I have that issue. So I can't eat unless I'm watching something. That's a really bad decision. <laughs> your gray matter gets uh, like uh, diminished basically. Okay. So reduce. Uh, so 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 those things like the, there are parental controls. Like you, all these offers offer that. But when you're offering your own phone to a kid, basically, what are the controls you have implied on your phone? Right. Nothing basically. Nothing. So but yeah, there are. There is bit of awareness in this. Like there are a lot of uh, psychologists talking about it, and uh, there are some technologically we can control of the, all of these things. Okay. So, uh, I I was speaking to one of the technology uh, influencer in India, very senior technology guy. He said that uh, I have small. I we are we live in a joint family, and we have multiple kids at our home. And uh, I keep on. He keeps on traveling abroad basically. Like one one week he's in Delhi, then rest of the week he's in private jet going to a lot of locations. Okay. I went for Diwali this year this time to him. He said that you know how I control my kids. He said that I will keep a time tab on a. Uh, I have a software that I will keep a tab on the number of hours spent on a particular platform basically. Hmm. Correct. Like the moment that. kids will uh, cross one hour on YouTube, it shuts down. It shuts down basically. Yeah. so that's how you can protect them this way that's right. one way to kind of protecting the kid. and then kids will start crying hmm. they they call him up while he is abroad he says uncle this uh, youtube is not working he said beta internet is down basically so that's how we play play around with that basically but point is that you cannot uh, actually uh, control that basically because the kind of accessibility of devices even in your smart tv basically How many people would know that you can do parental control in that? Basically? Right. How many people actually do okay. it? And and just by displaying that a certificate does not imply anything. Basically. Correct. Yeah. So like uh, for releasing any movie, this uh, central board of uh, uh, film association, uh, they they take lot of time in certification. They do. Yeah, but it's all available everywhere. Basically. Yeah. So anything, anything like that. So it's a big challenge as far as our society is concerned, basically, because we can uh, more and more. Uh, schools and colleges are getting into digital learning online learning basically there are multi modal devices there are ipads which are coming up yeah what we need to do that that learning devices have to be only made for learning basically Correct. the only way we can differentiate is that in let's say there is smartphone which will only open your classroom subject yeah. only not and nothing else will be nothing allowed nothing else will be even allowed. i see my son doing instagram basically <laughs> he's just 60 or he's going to be 60 Now, okay. Yeah, and it's screen time like seventy two percent on Instagram every day. <laughs> Happens, sir. He's, he's in ten. Reels. <laughs> But yeah. thank you so so much for being here today and answering all these questions. I yeah. learned a lot from your uh, various years of experience <laughs> and very yeah. funny anecdotes about all these campaigns and companies. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you for being here, sir. Thank you. Thank you.